hey you're at a place to heal i'm marie and today i'm going to show you how to get rid of irritable bowel syndrome in 30 days i know you're out there sitting there going no way it's not possible but if that's what you're thinking you don't know me because i'm one of those people that it's like i don't have time to um dilly dally around with uh, something like that forever and ever and ever. I, I want healing and I want it now. And one of the first issues that I attacked on my health journey was my irritable bowel syndrome. I just could not take it anymore. I had um, IBS plus I had um, ulcerative colitis. So I was going insane. And those of you who are plagued with this know that some you know on monday you can eat peanuts and you're perfectly fine tuesday you can eat peanuts and you can have a breakout it's you just never know um what you can eat and what you can't eat and what's going to throw your system off and what's not going to throw your system off and it just it interferes with your life and everything else so i'm going to show you a few things you can do and this is what i do with my clients and um most of you already know that I only deal with clients that are serious and they want to get in there. They want to take care of stuff, um, you know, and, and that's the ones that I deal with because um, I don't have time for, uh, I might be able to do that or I don't know if I can get around to doing that. You know, I want to see some effort <clears throat> on the part of the person really wanting to heal because you really got to want to heal in order to do this. Okay, so the first thing that I recommend is you're actually going to attack your irritable bowel or your um, ulcerative colitis from both ends. You're going to take this from above and you're going to attack it from below. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to get very friendly with enemas. There's a lot of people that don't like enemas. If that's the case, turn the channel right now because um, I believe that in the near future there's going to be a flip. Uh, you know, in the 1970s, when you went to the hospital, it was the first thing that they suggested. But when they started making money off of actual pills and medication, and that they saw that they could make more money off prescribing medication than they can prescribing an enema for you, they were totally knocked out of the hospital scene. And now all of a sudden, doctors, uh, especially mainstream doctors who are on TV, I won't mention any names, say that they're bad for you. Not true. Um, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to purchase a little something called slippery elm powder. Okay, don't get the pills, nothing, it's got to be the powder. And this is a very light uh, powder and, and it's exactly what it says. It's the bark of the slippery elm tree. Okay, and there is nothing that's uh, more soothing to the intestinal tract than slippery elm you just will not find it out there. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna take two tablespoons of this powder and you're gonna warm it up in one quart of water. Okay, and it should be spring water. Try to use spring water because it's gonna go into your intestines. And you don't wanna get it too hot, 103 uh, Fahrenheit at the hottest because it's going into your intestines, you do not want to burn your intestines. For the women out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Test that water and put it on the inside of your, your hand right here to make sure it's not too hot and it's not going to scorch your intestines. So you're going to warm it up. Once you got it warmed up, you're going to strain it and you're going to put it into an enema bag and you're going to take it internally. And what this is going to do is this slippery elm powder is going to lubricate the whole inside of your lower intestines and that slippery elm is going to get into all those pockets and it's going to stop the pain instantly. I mean it's going to lubricate everything so well because this is it becomes very slimy and um, I mean this is like uh, a miracle in a can. You just I cannot begin to explain within three days um, it will actually stop a breakout within three days. Um, stop it cold. Um, so you want to do that. If you have the time, do it daily. Do it daily because you want to put that nourishment into your colon. If you can't 
do it weekly, but in order for to get rid of it in 30 days, you have to do it daily um, and get that up into your colon. Okay, um, the second thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna drink it. Okay, so what you wanna do, and I'm gonna show you, there's another video that I did um, on uh, tuberculitis, I believe, where I show you, but I'm gonna show you again. Um, you take one teaspoon and you just wanna put it in water. You can make a tea out of it. Uh, I don't recommend it, because this is not the best tasting stuff in the world. Okay, and you wanna make sure that you get it nice and mixed up in there. It has a tendency to clump, so I kind of squish it up against the sides. Okay. And as you're doing this, you're kind of checking up against the sides of the glass because this starts to coagulate. And I mean, it starts to thicken up almost like jello and has a, a gelatinous effect. And you don't want to drink it when it's gotten to the point where it's gotten that, where it's gotten to that point because it's, I don't know about you, but uh, I can't deal with stuff that's slimy like that. Um, I've never been one of those oyster eaters or mussel eaters. I just, stuff gags me. So, and this is, it's the same way. So once you get it to that consistency, where it's kind of running down the side of the glass, you just want to chug it. And that was one teaspoon in one cup, I measured it, one cup of water. Now, while I'm still doing this video, I'm going to show you why you want to chug it down. Okay. Now, the, um, like I said, the enema that you're going to use, you're going to use two uh, tablespoons in one quart of water. Do not add more than that because since it gets into to be this uh, gelatinous, you're not going to be able to get it to flow through the enema and into your colon. So you only want to use two tablespoons per one quart of water. And this one, like I said, you want to keep testing it until you get it to that perfect consistency where you want to just chug it. I don't like making a tea. It is not something that you want to enjoy. And for me, teas are very enjoyable. It's something that you sit and you sip on and you enjoy. And this is not one of those enjoyable teas. It, it's um, a slippery elm bark, and it tastes just like that. It tastes like bark. So um, you just want to chug it down. You can also use the pills. You cannot use the pills for uh, the, uh, the enema, but you can use, if you don't like it, if you don't want to drink it, you can use the pills. I drink it because it gets right to my colon faster. It's the easiest way to get it there. I don't even mess with pills. Okay, but as you can see, this is now starting to get really... Uh, thick and I'm gonna leave it there because I'm gonna show it to you later what happens. Okay, so there is a catch to the 30-day plan and of course, you know, there's always a catch with everything in life and that catch is that you cannot Once you start this program and you get on it, you cannot use your stomach as a trash can. Okay, if you've ever let a trash can sit outside and you haven't washed it and you keep adding junk to it and junk to it, you know what happens to that trash can. It invites all sorts of little critters to be living in that trash can. And that's exactly what you're doing by putting trash into your stomach. So once you start this program, you cannot use your stomach as a trash can because that's the reason you ended up with irritable bowel syndrome or um, ulcerative colitis is because, or just plain old colitis, that's how you ended up this way, is by using your stomach as a trash can. And what I mean by that is you cannot expect to drink this and continue eating uh, dairy. Dairy is very mucus forming, okay? It's very acidic 
to the body. You cannot continue eating meat and putting all that uric acid into your body and expect it to work for you. You cannot continue to eat all the junk, the sugar, the processed foods, all that, excuse my French, crap that you buy at the grocery store that's over-processed, made in factories. Use your stomach as a trash can and expect it to be clean because it's not going to happen. So one of the things that you have to do is you have to start eliminating the trash from your diet. And um, I have a lot of people that tell me, and I know this is the hardest part, I know, I know, because believe me, I've had to do it. And I have a lot of people that sit there and tell me, you know, I really want to do this. I really want to get healthy, Marie, but I just, I can't stay away from the meat for some reason. Or everybody has a weakness. Everyone, when you start eliminating junk from your diet, you're going to notice that you have a weakness. That weakness is either going to be for dairy. I've had people that just like, I can give up anything, but I just cannot give up cheese. I love my cheese. I have people that um, will sit there and say, I'll give up anything, but I just, I, I just can't give up my steaks. I have to have my steaks. I'll, or I'll have people that will sit there and say, you know, I'm willing to give up whatever you want, but please don't let me, don't make me give up my bread. You know, they're into the grains, the rice, the, the bread, the, you know, all the, the, the grains. So, um, you know, you are going to have a weakness somewhere and you're going to find out where that weakness is. Because when you start detoxing and you start cleaning your body, your body is going to show you where all your weaknesses are. Trust me, it is going to show you. So, you know, and those weaknesses are not the problem. They are the solution. Okay? So you have to think of them that way. You know, there's a lot of people that I work with that also have addictions. And I know because I, I know I've said this in my other videos and I'm going to say it again. I come from a heroin background. I come from a, a methamphetamine background. I come from a smoking background. So I know what addiction is all about. I come from a, an alcoholic uh, parent background. So trust me, I know what revolves around addiction and food has a huge addiction but you know alcohol is not the problem drugs are never the problem food addictions are never the problem that is the solution it's up to you to find out what is the problem why are you using what are you using alcohol for what is the problem that you're trying to cover up with alcohol what is the problem that you're trying to cover up with food. What is the problem that you're trying to cover up with drugs? So you, you, are you catching me here? That is never the problem. You, drugs are the solution. It's the solution to a problem. The, the alcohol is the solution to a problem. The food is the solution to a problem. The shopping, the addictive shopping is the solution to a problem. So when you're detoxing, you're not just detoxing the nasty food out of your system and taking the trash out. You're also having to detox buried feelings or feelings that no longer serve you. I mean, you're detoxing that as well. So you need to get in there and find out where um, these feelings are coming from. And you know what, if you can't, um, because let me tell you, I mean, cigarettes was like the worst for me. I was able to, to get off everything else, but the cigarettes, Oh my God, I just, you know, I mean, I tried gum, I tried patches, I tried having people take them away from me. I try, I mean, I tried everything. I could not get away from those things and they were just so addictive. So, you know, sometimes you have to pray for, um, you know, a solution to come to you. Like right now I have a, a client who cannot seem to give up his beer. He just can't. And sometimes, you might hear it a certain way and it doesn't click, but you have to hear it another way and then it clicks. Uh, uh, you know, so I haven't said what clicks with him yet. So I need to keep saying different things to him till something clicks and he goes, oh yeah, I shouldn't do this anymore. You know, and um, I had that problem 
obsessed with cigarettes and I had that problem with bread. And bread was very hard for me to give up. I mean, I gave up sugar. It was hard, but I gave up sugar. And But it just seemed that bread, it just, man, it had me. And I had a lot of people tell me, well, bread will spike your sugar. And I'm like, yeah, 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 whatever. You know, uh, bread will do that. Yeah, 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 whatever. But finally, when somebody told me, you know what? Your liver is so toxic that the little bugs that are living in your liver are the ones causing you to crave that bread. I was like, whoa, hang on. So every time I had a bread craving, I was like, no, I'm not feeding you boogers anymore because I want you guys out of there. Just the thought of having parasites um, anywhere in my stomach just grossed me out enough to stop eating bread. I gave up bread. Um, and sometimes you just have to pray, you know, please <laughs> send me a sign. Have somebody say something to me that will click with me so I will stop this. Um, you know, I went kind of extreme with the cigarettes thing. I could not get off the cigarettes. And um, I actually took a trip to California <laughs> where we were on a train and I could not smoke on the train. And I was literally, I would take this uh, this little thing that was given to me by my doctor and it was like hits of nicotine. And I would hit it like once an hour just to calm the nicotine because I had to be on this train for 15 hours. And I felt so horrible about myself. You know, when I got to the destination, I was like, just give me a pack of cigarettes. You know, please, somebody just give me a cigarette. You know, and I, but I hated myself. I was like, man, you know, I can't believe that I, I'm just, something has that much of a hold on me that <laughs> I can't let go of it. But, you know, so I sat there and I prayed and I was like, please help me get off these things. I can't do it anymore. Two months later, I was in a hospital with a tube inserted into my lung. They had to go and do surgery and put a tube into my lung. I was being fed by um, fake air. I had oxygen uh, turned up as high as it would go. And my doctor came in and told me, if you light up one more time, you're going to lose your lung and you're going to die. That was what I needed to hear. That was it. Ever since that day, I've never, <laughs> you know, I hope that you don't ever have to go that far. But I hope you feel me what I'm, I'm saying to you. You know, if just pray that something clicks within you to stop whatever it is that you have to stop, whether it's the sugar, the soda, the, you know, the anything, the caffeine, whatever it is that you need to do. And, you know, sometimes you don't want to stop it. Uh, straight cold turkey you know sometimes like the soda the way that I got off a of soda even though I knew that sparkling water was not healthy for me in any way I would put like strawberries in sparkling water and I would drink that uh, to take my soda craving away and I knew that I would have to get off the filter the fizzy water because fizzy water is not good for your kidneys but you know I went little by little and, you know, the bread was the same way. You know, I, I would have two two slices of bread. You know, then I took it down to one slice of bread. Then I would do, just do like half a slice and, you know, cut that in half. And, you know, little by little, I just took it out. Whatever you have to do, go from coffee to tea and then go from to decaf. And, you know, whatever you have to do. I know some of them are bad, but just do whatever you have to do to get away from using your stomach as a trash can. Your body can't deal with that very much longer. Um, I, you know, and then there's also where, where are those problems coming from? You know, why are you having that craving for bread? Sometimes it's not just the little bugs in your stomach. Sometimes it's up here. Why are you having the craving for that beer? You know, sometimes it's up here. Um, I had a really hard time getting off of sugar, and the reason I had a very hard time getting off of sugar is because every time I got upset, I would head for the Snickers bar. And I hated myself because at that point I was a diabetic. I could not take the risk of, and my sugar would go through the roof, but I could not stop myself. And as I did some internal searching, I started realizing that as I was growing up, any time that I had problems in school or any time that I had problems with my relationships or any time that I had problems at work, I would go to my grandmother and I would sit with her in her bedroom and my grandmother always had Snickers bars in the drawer. 
in, of her bedroom, and I knew that. And she would t always tell me to sit down, and she'd go, have a seat, honey. Here, have a Snickers bar. Chocolate makes everything better. So now, every time I had a problem or I got upset or I was upset because my blood sugar was too high or I wanted to go straight for the Snickers bar, and I had to come to terms with that and make that connection. So try to figure out if you have a connection um, with that food. You know, um, at one time you might have been out with your friends and your friends may have said, hey, let's go out and have some beers. And you had some beers and it was, it, you felt great. You felt great because you drank that beer and it made you feel wonderful. It made you feel invincible. And the, the next time you had an argument with your wife, your girlfriend, whatever, you went and had a beer and you got together with your friends and it made you feel invincible. And you have that memory stuck in your mind. You know, hey, if I drink beer, it makes me feel good and it makes me feel invincible. You have something good attached to that memory. And that's what you've got to get to is to that memory in order, um, in order to heal that. Um, I have found, this is why I have found that single people, believe it or not, I know this sounds crazy, but single people actually detox and can um, can hold on to a program better than people who are in a relationship or um, share their life with someone. Um, for instance, and I'll, I'll tell you why, um, I have a gentleman that I'm working with right now, I love to death, I've been working with him, um, he's 55, I've been working with him now for a year. He's a full-blown type 2 diabetic. His numbers are always at 400. And we have done his diet. I mean, he's eating raw. He's uh, eating fruit. He's eating. He's doing great. But we cannot bring his numbers down, no matter how hard we try. And um, a couple of days ago, I was over at his house, and I had never met his wife. Okay, it was the first time I had ever met his wife, and she had just gotten home from work. And we were sitting there talking, and she walked in, and she says, hi. And she looks right past me, looks at him, and she goes, is dinner ready? And he said, no, I've been busy doing my, you know, my follow-up on my, and she goes, so what have you been doing? Sitting on your ass like you always do? And I was like, whoa. Okay, I now see why we can't bring his numbers down. Because when you're stressed out like that in a situation like that, and I don't care whether you're dealing with a wife, a husband, children, significant other, you know, I don't care. I don't care what you're dealing with, parents that are constantly nagging at you, whatever. Your pancreas is constantly excreting insulin it is in a state of flight or flight constantly and you know your liver is uh, becoming toxic there's anger that's being held inside your liver all sorts of things are going on so you also need to figure out where that irritable bowel syndrome ulcerative colitis diabetes cancer lupus I don't care what it is chronic liver problems what it is that is causing that because a lot of people do not make that connection I was in a very very toxic relationship and I held on to a lot of anger and that anger just about killed fried my liver because I noticed that as I started cleaning out my liver I could not believe all the anger and the sadness and everything that I was just releasing it's it's a very therapeutic so there is a lot of things around what's going on inside your body that you have to look at, okay? So you have to look at not only diet, what you're putting into your body, what thoughts you're having, you know, where, where is, might this be coming from? My, my bad addictions to food, uh, why do I feel that I need to uh, to do this? Why do I feel that I constantly need to go out and have that slice of pizza or drink that soda? You know, be conscious about that. 
um, about what you're putting into your body and why you're putting it into your body and also your surroundings. I mean, do you have a tendency to cheat when your boss yells at you? Um, is it your wife jumping down your throat? Is it your husband driving you crazy? Is it your kid that won't listen? You know, I mean, what? you also got to look at your surroundings, okay? So um, now I'm going to show you why you want to chug that, okay? And you don't want to make a tea out of this because it becomes this nasty, nasty, slimy, yucky mess. All right, so... I know I've ranted on about other stuff that doesn't pertain to <laughs> um, to w what we started out talking about, and I'm really sorry about that, but I thought that, you know, those things um, do make a lot of sense, and believe me, it's like I see it in all, every single case that I have gone out to help, I see it, you know. I see this person suffering with a oh, horrible irritable bowel and then I see the husband coming through the door yelling and screaming at the kids and I'm like well no wonder your bowels irritable I would be irritable too you know if you eat and you're nervous I mean that you have more nerves in your stomach than you do in your brain I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on in here you know, so you really, really, I cannot stress enough. I mean, I can go on about this for like two hours, intestinal issues, because just like my kidneys, they're very dear to my heart too, because I had horrible intestinal issues. I mean, I had ulcerative colitis, I had diverticulitis, I had irritable bowel syndrome, I had, um, you know, I couldn't even digest my food. I couldn't digest my food, period. You know, I had stagnation in my bowels where nothing was moving. Um, I mean, I I had horrible, horrible, I had ulcers. I, I can't even begin to go into the list of stuff that I had. And now um, I, you are supposed to go after every single meal. And, um, you know, I went from after, you know, once a day to twice a day to, to every meal. You know, and that's the way that it should be. So, please take care of your health because once you start having all sort of a colitis or once you start having IBS it goes downhill from there everything starts to slow down everything starts to stop working and if you keep putting trash in that trash can and you do not empty that trash can, which is gonna, what's going to end up happening if you can't eliminate. If you put in, you it's got to come out. That stuff is not coming out. It's just going to sit there, and it's putrefying. It's making your body toxic. It'll eventually start affecting your liver, your pancreas, your gallbladder, your kidneys, and then everything will eventually shut down. So if you're at the point right now where you have IBS or ulcerative colitis, please start taking care of your body now. All right, so until next time, um, please stay happy, stay healthy, and do not use your stomach as a trash can. All right, bye-bye.